And you guys can hear me on YouTube, uh, please. NQ, I, Sysburg, Cell, NQ, 323 contracts. So there's my info. Um, we'll do the quick disclaimer here, and then I'll be back in 90 seconds. Risk disclosure statement. There is a risk of loss in trading stocks, EDFs, commodity futures, derivatives, options, forex, and cryptocurrencies. This risk can be substantial, and therefore investors should carefully consider their financial suitability prior to trading. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. The software, strategies, chat rooms, websites, and any associated websites or digital venues are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as an express or implied promise or guarantee that you will profit or that loss is limited in any manner whatsoever. Users of the information accept sole responsibility for the outcomes of their deployment and hold Cycle Senate Trader, LLC, and any associated companies, agents, management, owners, and customers harmless without reservation. Please trade responsibly. Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CITC, Rule 4.41, hypothetical and simulated trading performance results of certain inherent limitations, some of which are described herein. No representation is being made that any account below is likely to achieve products or losses similar to those shown. In fact, there are frequently sharp differences between hypothetical or simulated performance results and the actual results subsequently achieved by any particular trading program. One of the limitations of hypothetical performance results is that they are generally prepared with the benefit of hindsight. In addition, hypothetical trading does not involve financial risk, and no hypothetical trading requires completely account for the impact of financial risk in actual trading. For example, the ability to expand losses or adhere to a particular trading program in spite of trading losses or material points which can also adversely affect actual trading results. Because these trades have not actually been executed, the hypothetical results may have under or overcompensated for the impact, if any, of certain market factors such as lack of liquidity. There are numerous other factors related to the markets in general or to the implementation of any specific trading program which cannot be fully accounted for in simulated trading or in the preparation of hypothetical performance results at all, of which can adversely affect actual trading results. This trade room and its webinars are not intended to mirror my trades or to give specific trade recommendations. The analysis and setups I share are trades of potential trades that I'm taking for myself based on my personal analysis. The goal of this room is to teach trades how to identify specific areas to trade within it for themselves, but ultimately the decision is yours. Trading is extremely risky, and if you do decide to follow my personal trades, you do so at your own risk and could potentially lose your entire account and even more. I'm not always profitable and have routine drawdowns on my trading accounts. The spreadsheet you have access to is my personal spreadsheet that I use to enter zone values and ATR values that help me pinpoint exact prices for my trades. You can see when I enter zone prices into the master spreadsheet as well as the prices to enter trades whether you want to go long or short. You have the ability to copy the spreadsheet and enter in your own values and use mine to confirm the zone prices until you're able to draw the zones correctly yourself. The spreadsheet is not telling you which direction to trade as it has entry prices and stop prices for both long and short positions depending on which personally decide to trade. Alrighty. So markets are going crazy right now to the upside. Shocker shocker. Gold stocks stocks L G C 152 contracts. Gold going ape shit as my grandpa Chooch used to say. Uh, actually long gold will go over this year. I need to draw this current setup so I can trail my stop and we'll go over I missed the first part of this huge move, but I at least caught the second. Um, so we got some sub stops, which is kind of odd on a up move here, but uh, we'll go overall, drawing these zones and everything else here once I get my bearings. Of course, I'm struggling with the software, and then stuff's flying, going crazy. There's 1,500 buy stops in ES. I haven't even drawn that area yet, so. And guys, if you can, if this tick strike and the, um, I turn my internal volume down, but this, this, I tell you guys every week, this software picks up this noise, these noises. If this is, if this is too loud, if this is, if the tick strike is um, too loud, it's like over my talking, let me know and I'll just turn it off. But I, you know, I obviously like to have it on so I can see this, but see what's going on. <clears throat> All right, um, so quickly we'll go over the gold trade here in a second. 1968.8 to 1968.3 is the most recent volume event. T 
here is the same. All right, so I'm long. I'm gonna trail my stop now to that price. We'll go over, like I said, these trades here in a second. <coughs> Second, All right, how's it work? All right, let's see where we are in equities now. Let's see what I missed. So you see they're just buying the bejesus out of this thing. You can see this market pulls pulled over some of that stuff that I'm seeing here too. But I mean, they've been just buying this thing like crazy. I mean, you can see these market pulls and the um, the sweeps indicator firing off. But big buying, big buying, big buying, big buying, big buying. Then that all led to a 1500 watt stop run right there. So I was actually getting ready to short it, but um, you know, I don't just short in certain areas I need to see the volume setups agree with what I'm what I'm considering and this is this is never a bearish setup so let's get this on in first this is the last thing you can see here this was 1600 buy stops aka major puke um, so the top of that zone was 44.37.50 down to 44.34.75. Come to the spreadsheet. So this spreadsheet is proprietary to my trade room. If you come to my trade room, you get access to it. It's a godsend. Um, you just plug in the zones, you plug in the current ATR, and it tells you exactly where you get in. Uh, doesn't tell you where to get out per se for this strategy this one it does we'll go over these but um, for the position trading for these um, these setups these acronyms or the different trading strategies or strategies we're using in my room I'll use um, I get out subjectively at certain areas and we'll go over that you know as we get into this webinar but let's uh, see something here let's see if we get new lugs we'll go over these level levels as well all right, so no, no new lug yet, so that's interesting. Um, so these are these are Ludwig levels that I use. These are awesome, incredible support and resistance areas, and then also you can come up with a um, you know a thesis based on the mark how the market's reacting. So one of the things that um, one of the main thesis ideas that you get when you know, when it clears a lug, if it can't, doesn't have the conditions to build her new lugs, and it, it, th these are proprietary, so I don't know all her inputs. I don't know any of her inputs. I have an idea of some of them, but I, I don't need to know. Like I used the analogy every week, you know, when you walk into a, into a room and you need light, do you need to dissect the light bulb or do you just need it to flip the switch and know it works, right? So I know these work. They're incredible. I've been using it for two years. Second most powerful thing I've ever seen next to Bookmap. Um, so I don't know her inputs. I don't need to know them. I watched them for uh, six months before I finally started to use them you know shame on me I should have started using them right away but the point is when you know these are these are the major lugs the blue and the red when you get get above the red you usually will draw new lugs well if the conditions aren't meant to draw new lugs and they get back below the red then watch out so I mean you know this is a perfect situation where I am not excited to short this thing it's, it looks like it's going to the moon like always but if this volume setup sets up for a short, which this looks like it's trying to, I mean they keep they keep swiping this thing like crazy. So, but that, I mean this is not going to deter me if this. So I have specific rules for my volume setups, right? So this is a stop run. If this thing moves below here, uh, I will take. It's one of the um, trading strategies in the room. It's called a slug. It's a stop run at a major lug. I will I will enter this trade aggressively, meaning the, the minute it breaks an ATR plus 15% out of the zone, I enter the trade, right? I am full aware of their buying the crap out of this thing, but, you know, that's not part of my trade plan where I'm like, wow, and I, I get this in my room all the time. They're like, well, they're, they're really buying it like crazy. Why would you short here? Okay, well, that's not part of the trade plan. If if my if my the factors for my actual trade line up, I take the trade, right? I, I don't I try to take as much subjectiveness out of it. That's where traders 
get in trouble, right? That's where they can't make decisions and they're, they're, they're sitting here. They want to short it, but they're afraid, blah, blah, blah. If I get my volume, so this is the driver of all my trading, these volume setups, right? If, if the parameters fit for the trade, I put the trade on and I have the exact prices that I get in and my stop and I'm in the trade. So for instance, this trade would be a slug. see our prices here <clears throat> I'm not saying trades feel good but if you're gonna be a consistent profitable trader you have to follow your rules right so this would be a slug it's one of the um, one of my strategies stop run at major lug and this is an aggressive entry meaning I get in right away so that price for this trade would be if I'm going short I get short at 40 44 29 and I could put on seven contracts so this spreadsheet is built to adhere to your risk to my risk parameters i'm trading these apex accounts um, to keep track accurate tr stats of each one of my strategies we'll go over apex here in a little bit too um, but with this apex account it's supposed to be a hundred fifty thousand dollar account it's a five thousand dollar account because that's all you can really lose on the drawdown um, and i'm risking way this, so i'm being very aggressive with these accounts we talk about this every week the most you should be risking for trading real money on each individual trade is two percent 0.02%, right? So you should not be risking 10% on trades. I'm doing, I'm more aggressive on these on these um, accounts to get these things live. But the point is, if you have a $5,000 account, you should be risking 2%, which is $100 per trade, not $500 per trade. And I've, I've actually got burned yesterday trading too big. I actually traded double size on account, so that was 20% of the of the loss limit, and I took it on the chin, right? So that's a great example of you don't want to be over trading your account. You're going to have a bad day, and you're going to blow it out. It's a 100% guaranteed. You know, you may go for months, and you don't have a bad day, and then you're going to have one, and you're going to see what I'm talking about. So adhere your risk rules. So anyway, this, this spreadsheet's set up to... You know, take the zone prices into account and the current volatility. That's the ATR average true range. That's what we're using to, to gauge. It's a five minute, 14 period while there's ATR. Uh, and that spits out how many I can trade and the exact prices I can trade. So this is where I would enter 44.29 on the short and I could put on a seven lot. So let's see where we're at here. That was just sitting in the zone. So the way I trade these zones is if this gets. An ATR above here, well, then my shorts disqualified, right? And this is just from watching thousands of these setups. I know. So it'd be nice iceberg sells, yes, 197 contracts. I know how, how much, you know, how these, how these areas, these volume, high concentrated volume areas work. And when the market's able to push an ATR out of those areas, it, it's telling you something, right? So if this is able to get an ATR out of here, and that's in the spreadsheet as well, you don't have to guess, you just look. Look at what it is. So that would be the valid either the validation price for a long or the invalidation price for a short. Either way, it's 4250. Meaning, if this market gets up to 4250, then this is a bullish event. Uh, until then, I am taking a short here aggressively on the slug first and foremost. So I better get this in before this thing starts to 4429, and I can put on a seven seven micros to risk five hundred dollars on this trade. That in that is the slug 4429. All right, so again, I'm taking this trade. We don't have new lows here. I gotta keep refreshing this thing on Sierra. And this is gonna be very telling if this gets back below this red lug and did not have the conditions to form new lugs. If you watch the webinar that I that I did with um, I'll even put this in here. I think I got it right in front of me. That I did with Pamela Ludwig. This was a couple years ago, but it's still it was a great webinar because it's very basic, um, and it was just straightforward questions I asked her. And hold on here, let me find it for you. I, I post it every week, but there's always new traders on here, so let me. Actually, I think it's on my YouTube channel as well. I'll just post this now because I don't have time to look for my YouTube link. But that's in the uh, YouTube chat if you guys want to watch that. It's so, very informative and it talks about the logs and, that I use consistently. All right, so like I said, this feels, this short feels terrible, right? I mean, this feels actually, let's see where we're at on the bigger picture too because I may be shorting for another. Let's see. 
All right, so this is actually an Izzy trade as well. So this is an inflection zone. So these are important areas that I draw on the chart, the four important areas of charting um, that I actually post for my room every day for all the, for 17 different futures markets. So these are where important things happen on the chart. And you'd be amazed, like this one happened last August-ish. And you can see how the market's respected this, this zone we're in right now a few times now. So if we go all the way back here, you can see this was an important area that this market gapped down from selling tail selling tail so so the four important areas of trading i mean of charting are tops and bottoms of balance areas high volume and balance of balance areas directional conviction so directional conviction this is a gap but that's directional conviction as well this is directional conviction and then buying and selling tails right selling tail selling tail so these are where I draw these zones. You can see this was this was multiple things. This was a gap down. This was a selling tail. These actually I could have probably brought this down a little lower to incorporate these two tails. But the point is, this was an important zone, and you can see this was last last August, right? And then you see when the market comes back up here a year later, almost almost, the, and, and it respects the zone, right? So I didn't do, I didn't change the zone at all for current things. And came up here, failed, came up here, failed, and here we are again. So I can now take an easy trade as well, an inflection zone trade. That's an aggressive trade as well. So that's just another one of the strategies that we're trading in the room. And that is this trade here, inflection zone trade, aggressive. So I get in, so I have two different types of entries for these zones. I either get in aggressively, meaning the minute they break an ATR plus 15% out of the zone, I'm in. We already know that's 29 or I wait, certain situations I will wait for an ATR, a retest of the zone, a failure of the zone, and then I get in to confirm the area, right? The Izzy's and the slugs, they're so power those areas are so powerful, you may not get a retest, so that's why I get in right away, right? And I'm not doing anything yet until I can determine what kind of setup this is. I may be going long this setup. Yes, it's in an inflection zone, but I have different trading strategies that I take, so I wouldn't be taking an Izzy here. Izzy's are fake trades. But I would be taking a BARF first and foremost. So again, we make these like these names funny. They're acronyms. So it's a blind blind ATR retest failure, aka BARF, right? So we make them funny and memorable. Um, but this is a separate strategy. So and I have you can see I have these Apex accounts set up for each one of these strategy for each one of these strategies, and then I actually broke it down even further for the BARF equity, BARF energy, BARF metals, BARF brands and bonds, right? So. There is a way I can be long this setup too. I'm a day trader, right? Even if I have a thesis for the day, like, hey, I think this is a resistance area. I think we're going to break down. If my, if these, this is the driver of markets, guys, like the real time, the real time buying. So if this turns out to be a bullish setup, I will take a long for the bar setup, right? If it turns out to be a short setup, I'll take those, the Izzy and the slug, and I could actually take a bar setup too if that occurs. So we'll see how this plays out. But I'm willing to trade either way. When you have a thesis for the day, you know, some, some traders come up with a thesis and they won't trade the other way for the day. I, you know, I'm okay with that, but, you know, you're going to have days where you're sitting there doing nothing, right? If you're, if you're like, if I was bearish this market or, or if I was bearish gold today, well, then I'm missing all these, all these setups on this rip up. We'll go over this trade, too. I missed the beginning of this, like I was telling you guys. Um, but this was a whopper. You can see here, this all started way down here like way down here i missed the first part of this this was this was actually a slug the other way we might as well just cover that while we're waiting to see what happens in the yes so i actually just draw on the zone and i was you know i have to draw these um all the the inflection zones so just to show you guys my trade room here quickly this is what you guys get as well as a member of my trade room so i post every day uh, over here actually so I post these charts that we're just talking about. So this is the ES chart. So you can go in and put these on your charts. You can draw these zones yourself. This just will save you time, obviously. So I cover, you know, obviously ES has like all these markets, 17 different markets. So that's what I was doing this morning and that cost me to miss this trade, which uh, now hurts really, really bad, but that's trading. Um, so anyway, let's just look here. So this was down here. Like, look at this move. This, this is what I'm talking about with these Ludwig levels. And actually, I didn't put. I need to put that in the. Um, just quickly, this is her website, Ludwig Levels, because I always get emails. What are what are the love, love levels? What are those? Ludwig Levels. Go to her 
website. Put your name information in. You can get a three-day trial. Say you saw it on the Bookmap webinar. She has special pricing for that. And then you can try them out. And trust me, once you try them out, you will be baffled with how well they work. So anyway, this was a slug. We had a stop run at the blue lug right there. Actually, this was a slug and an Izzy. Here's the Izzy. So I missed both. Now I, I just saw that. I mean, I knew it was an Izzy. I forgot it was a lug. So you can see here, this was an Izzy. It got a little bit through this zone, but the stop run so was basically in this zone. These are just the zones, right? This is for something from a long time ago. So the further this stretches back, the longer it was, obviously. But you had a stop run in here, and you had um, a slug. So I missed both of those trades initially. I got in later, but you can see this is, this is a strategy, and this was the trade. I'm gonna have nightmares about missing this one. So let me get this off here. So that, you can't even see it, like, because then I put this in the room later on, but this was the slug. This was like 300 stops right here. That's that zone. I should have been in aggressively the slug and the Izzy, the same thing I'm gonna be trading in the short side, potentially in ES that we're talking about, and off to the races. And then this came up. You know, and then I, I posted in my room. Again, this is, you know, this is what this room looks like. Just giving you giving it a plug, but this is what goes on, right? So if I see something, I'll post it right here. This is right before this thing launched from that. Huge buy ice, a thousand plus, right? So then we actually got, so this was just the barf trade, barf and the lick trade, liquidity trade. And you can see this is the usual pattern. So I, I didn't get in this trade aggressively. I waited for ATR retest. So this was Actually, I have a colored wrong. This was sell ice, not buy ice. I think I put buy ice in the room. This was supposed to be sell ice, so I'm not going to color it now, but I usually color my sell ice black. So anyway, guys, it doesn't matter. Like in, When I first came, when the SSI indicator first came out, there was these, there was these misconceptions. Um, like I would say, okay, here's some sell ice. you got to get short. That That's not the case. Yes, it has a higher percentage of being, the, the big money has a higher percentage of being right because they're the big money and they push the market around, right? But when they're wrong... The price is wrong, bitch. Pardon my language. That's from uh, Happy Kilmore. When they're wrong, it's the same effect, right? The whole point is we're looking for these high volume areas. This one paper stepped up and sold over a thousand contracts. How did that work out for him? Not very good, right? So anyway, here's the pattern: ATR retest failure. I got long both the barf trade. Gold the stop stop by GC. One hundred fifty nine contracts. Um, and the lick trade because there's liquidity up here at the time that it got filled, obviously. Uh, and this was the trade, and I rode this thing up. The, I mean, this was pretty instant, and then you had these setups come in that I kept trailing my stop too, right? So I don't. I only trail my stop if I see a new volume event, or, or else I'm getting out in other, you know, in areas like limit orders in other areas. But I'll trail stops. So this came in, then I had my stop. My original stop was an ATR below this. This event here, right? So I, this is ATR retest failure. I got long here. Stop was below there. I had a new event, I moved my stop below that event, got a new event, moved my stop below that event, and now I'm just riding this thing up, right? I got out of a few as this moved up. Here's a new event too, and now another new event that we just trailed the stop to on the webinar, and now we have another event. So you can see on days, you know, on trending days, you can catch this whole move. Not one of these volume events has violated an ATR to the downside. So I'm just holding on to this trade. I have I only have one left for each each uh, strategy because I got out of some areas. We'll cut. We'll go over here in a second. But the point is, you this is how you catch the big moves because there has not been a volume event that is that has failed to the downside. So you stay in the trade, right? This just takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, like or the the internal conflict, like oh man, this is big move. This can't go any further. I got to get out here. I, you know, I got out in certain areas that I always get out at, and we'll cover that in my trading in the zone document that I show you guys every week. Uh, but then I let a portion ride until we get to the major lugs. Actually, I think this might be a major lug, so I might be getting out of this anyway now. Well, but if it's not at a major lug, lug I just keep holding it until one of these volume, event, volume events fails. Let's see where we're at here. What a move. Holy camoly. All right, so this is real, real close to the red lug, right? So... I'm actually, since I'm going to be on this webinar, I'm just going to hop out of this trade right now because this is a, this is a very nice trade, very nice move, and I missed, again, the first 150 ticks of this move. Let me get out of this. 
and that this is good enough for me. This could keep going right now, but you know, this you don't see these types of move all the time. And I mean, gold, gold can keep going, don't get me wrong, but it's like this is a whopper of a move. And we're at the red lug, you know, we're also at the high volume node of this balance area. This is a very important um, area for gold right now, right? So it tried to break down. Many times when markets break down from balance areas, they'll come back, they'll retest the bottom, then they'll go. 84 BCF, 84 the high BCF, they draw then on the full go. cost high of 94 BCF. just the point of, of, the, of the balance area where the most trade occurred, right? If it gets through that high volume node, then that is a failed breakdown. And these are some of the best trades on the planet, right? Where, you know, bigger picture stuff where if this gets a little higher, so it's, it's a little, this is, all, this is just an area, right? I mean, it's an area. If it, but if you start seeing the market up here, you don't want to be short because this is, it had its chance to break down. Not only did it not break down, then it rips 400 ticks. You don't want to be short this market. Bigger picture, I'm talking. I would take shorts with volume setups, but I'm saying if you're looking thesis wise, this is definitely a failed breakdown. This gets a little higher. A bit of this zone was here. For, this is where this gap down overnight. But this is still in the high volume node. In my meaning, I don't really have a strong conviction of a failed breakout yet. This could just fail right here as well. So we'll see what happens. But that's you know that's how I judge. And then if I if my thesis lines up with the volume events, then I trade those bigger, right? But I will trade both ways based on these volume events because I'm I'm a day trader. These are things that are happening right now and these are the drivers of the market all markets not lines on a chart volume that's firing off of the market 1970.7 down to 1969.9 is your new zone let's put that in and then we'll go see what's happening with the yes so we have about the weekly eia natural gas report on the feed for all, right, all those interested 1970.7 yeah. because this thing is just flying all over the place. Actually, it's come down a little bit, 27.5. So these are the prices to figure out if this is this new event is bullish or bearish. This is actually really close to a slug, so I would probably take this short aggressively if this moves down below, and that would be, I would get in there. But to make this a short setup, it needs to touch 72. If it touches 35, I'm talking the last two digits, it's a long setup. So this is just like, yes, we don't know what it is until it breaks out of here. So we'll keep an eye on that. Speaking of yes, see what happened here. Did this prove itself to be a bullish? So first of all, shocker, shocker. This is why we have a liquidity trade because these guys always get their way because they're the big money and they push their, they put in their offers and they buy, they buy, they buy, and then they push the market right into their sell orders and then they're out. How do I know that? Because that was the game I played every day of my life when I was a scalper. I would load up the order book with, back then, this looked, this literally was thousand lots, right? And I would put a thousand lot, a couple thousand lots on the offer, and then I would sit here and, and start accumulating down here. And then when it, when it get close to my my orders, I would like step on the gas. People would jump on, jump on my coattails, and run it right into my offers, and I'd be out of the trade. I, that's all I did all day, every day for four years. So that's how I know what's going on because it's one big game, and the guys that have the biggest biggest pockets run the show. So. That's the beauty of book map. That's why it's you know, the most incredible thing you can use in your trading because you can see what the big money is trying to do, not only with liquidity, um, but with the SI indicator. And speaking of the liquidity, if you're using anything other than rhythmic and the MBO data from the CME, this your liquidity you're seeing is not real, meaning this dome, any other any other data provider for for seven years now and i don't know why these data, data providers are these other like the cqgs of the world and all these other things they're not offering mbo data well guess what all you're seeing is 10 level the, the real real size in the order book aka the liquidity real size in the order book is just 10 levels price levels up and 10 price levels down that's all that's all that's real all these numbers you see on your dome right now are it's not real orders so it, that's hard to believe, I, I know, but that's another beauty of Bookmap and the MBO data. Every order you see here is are real orders in the, in the order book after 10 levels. If you're not using Rhythmic and, 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 and getting this information, the MBO data, it's not real information. It's not real. That's pretty important information, right? 
All right, so let's see if this, so we needed, if this got up to 4250, this is a bullish setup. Did it get up to 4250? Nope, almost, but it did not get there. Got up to uh, pretty damn close. Let's see. Yeah, I missed within one tick. So that I hate these situations where you're like, ah, that was close enough, you know, but meaning, so this is how I'll trade this, right? I'll st I'm still going to take that short because it, it didn't get, well, let's, let's back up here. This is what you have to keep doing, though. Let's see what this ATR is now. Yeah, see, now it's not even close. 5.5 .5 is the ATR, so that, or it just was. It was 5.5, .5, so the, the validation price was, was 43. It did not get up to 43, so I'm okay still shorting this setup, right? This is how I determine whether these setups are bullish or bearish, like I said. If this can push a full ATR out of here, that is telling me that's a bullish setup. It's not guaranteed it's going to do that, but it, if it has the strength to get a full ATR away from the volume event, that's telling you something. That's how I judge. And again, this isn't just me by the fly, you know, just on a fly. I've been I've watched, you know, tens of thousands of these setups and that's how the, that's how these things trade. And you would be amazed. And to, just like we have an ATR trade too, when the market gets an ATR, we actually this is one of them right here. So this is one of the this is the short term strategy we have in the room, the ATR reversion strategy. Right? So you would actually miss that trade by a tick, which sucked. But this is literally playing for the ATR, the reversion back to the zone. So you would be getting in at 42.50, your stops at 49, you're back out at 38. And it's just, this is a quick scalp trade for all you guys that want to scalp. And I don't blame you. I mean, my mind is built for a scalping mentality too, but I've had to adjust over the years because you can't scalp these markets off of the dome. So those of you who keep sending me emails saying, oh, I want to learn how to trade off the dome, you're not going to learn how to trade off the dome unless you can write computer programs that are fast enough to trade off the dome. If you think you're going to stare at this thing and make money consistently, you're you're wrong. I, I will go against anybody who tells me, yeah, you might make money for a short period of time staring at this stuff. The, guys, this is so fleeting. This this size is, is not real most of the time. So if you can make money trading this, I just had somebody email me the other day convincing me that he can make money trading off the dome. If you can make money trading off the dome, don't you think I'd be trading off the dome? This is how I made $15 million in three years trading, staring at this thing. So if I'm not doing it, you think I don't want to make another $15 million? So if I'm not doing it, it might give you kind of a, a warning like, okay, that might be hard to do these days. So I'm probably not going to make money trading off of the dome, right? That's my point. I'm not bragging, guys. I'm, I'm telling you that's one of my, you know, that's the whole point of this is showing you guys like, it's not like me saying, oh, I'm some huge trader. No, I went from riches, rags mm -hmm. to riches to rags where I could, I made millions of dollars and then my way of trading disappeared, right? And my way of trading when I made the millions was off of this. So it's a long-winded rant on if I can't do it, I will, I'm saying, I'm not saying I'm all God almighty trader, but I'm telling you, I was one of the best in the world at doing this at the time. If I can't make money doing that, you are, you are wasting your time trying to, to find edge just in watching the orders come in the order book, is all I'm telling you, because it's just too fast. Unless you can build programs, that's a different story, but then you're just fighting algos. I don't want to fight algos. I want to, the algos are 80% of the trade. I want to know, you know, and this is why when I enter my trade, for instance, like if this comes back down, I get short, I put my stop way up here. What, why is that? Well, because I forced it to get the ATR out of that from where it was, through the volume event, and then push another ATR, then I say, okay, I'm wrong. Other than that, you're just opening yourself up for Algo City and getting whipsaw, right? So we'll cover that. I'll go into those rants and do it every day. But All right, so this short's still working. I got a 44.20. Actually, this might have changed too. Let's check because you want to keep updating your ATR until you get film. 5.37 now. So 28.50 is my new entry. It was 29 when the ATR was a little lower, so I got to change that. So that is where I will short this trade aggressively. 28.50. That is these. Uh, that's the slug and the Izzy, right? That's the Izzy. New Izzy here. Hold on. Um, hold on one second, guys. I gotta check something out here that I can answer some questions possibly. So 28.50, and we're almost there right now. Let's see what happens. 
So remember, I, I, this did not disqualify as a short setup. It did not get to that ATR 43, so I was still short it, and I'm about to short it right now. And yes, this feels terrible. Like I mean, we see with the market pulse, we'll order some of this stuff too. This thing is the next incredible thing on the on from book map. They just keep coming out with better and better. I'm like a kid in a candy store. When I tell my room all the time, I think I told you guys too, having book map is like having a trading firm behind you, right? So my, a lot of times in my room, we get first dibs to the to the new indicators to test them out, right? Because like I'm there, you know, professional that they come to and say, hey, check this out. What do you think? What do you think? Just because I have so much market experience, right? So if you remember my room, we get a lot of this stuff firsthand before they release it to the public just to try it out. So what I tell my room is, this is exactly so I worked, you know, when I was when I was a, a vagabond after, you know, I made millions and I couldn't make money anymore trading. I was like going from firm to firm trying to figure something out just to try to stay afloat. Right. You guys all know my story. And then I finally had to say uncle 2013 and go into medical sales and kiss doctors asses for four or five years. So that was really fun. But anyway, I was bouncing around from firm to firm. I had firm Wolverine Trading, and they're still a major firm. They're, they're an algorithm. They're one of the biggest firms out there. I worked for them for like a year and a half, trying to come up with a new system. This is way before Bookmap. This is 2010, right? But the point of the story is they would come, the developers would literally come to your desk, and they'd say, all right, we came up with this new, uh, this new tool, this new indicator. You want to try it out? And I'd say, yeah, and I'd try to find, see if I found anything useful in it. It is the same thing with Bookmap. It's like having your own personal trading firm that's coming to you. Hey, check out this tool. Hey, hey look at this tool. Hey, look at the SI indicator. Hey, look at Market Pulse. Guys, this stuff is incredible. This is what drives markets. Like, this is the best edge having Bookmap and these indicators that you can have in trading. I, I will put it up against anything on the planet at any time. Bring, bring it on. Anyone out there that's telling me that you know you don't need this, I'm not saying you can't make money with this. But if you're not using this information, you do not have all the information, and it's the most important information as far as I'm concerned, right? So I would heed that advice as well. All right, so no fill there yet. I missed it by a couple ticks. Let's see, though. This may be a barf trade. What was the official validation price? Um, where are we at here? So twenty nine fifty. So Net gas ice ice for by NG two hundred eighteen contracts. So natural gas. The number just came out. Look at that. I love natural gas. The thing rolls. Anyway, validation price for a short meaning if it touches that twenty nine fifty, then that volume setup that we just talked about is an official short setup. So now I can potentially put a barf short as well. I already have my aggressive shorts working, but this is the pattern, guys. And right back to the other trade we were looking, we're using. Here's the short term reversion trade. You would have gotten long right there. Perfect example. One ATR. This is why we take this trade. Right? You guys hear me on every webinar say it's from my my experience of watching these for, for almost five years now. These markets retest these volume events 70 plus percent of the time. The question is how far will it go before it comes back? But it comes back 70 percent of the time or more. And that is why, in my opinion, that is why we have this exact trade for that for that occurrence. So right there, this was all plugged in. These all these all populate when you plug in your zone and your ATR. I would have been long if I was. I can't do the reversion trades on the webinars. They're way, they're way too fast, right? But I'm just doing the position trades on the webinars. But point is, you would have been long at 40. And here's your risk too. So I'm risk of 500 bucks. I'd, I'd be, I could put on 16 contracts, risking 500 bucks, 16 MES, get long at 40.30, stops Net at 40. Net gas ice iceberg sell NG, 172 contracts. Stops at 44, 44.23, and I'm out at 34.25. So it's literally just a play back to the volume event, and you're out of the trade, right? So for all you scalpers that love to scalp, there you go. That's, this is it to a T, and it happens all day, every day, in all markets. I'm not saying the one works every single time, but the one or the two, sometimes the three. The inequities, it usually doesn't get all the way to the three before you get a new volume setup. But the point is the ones and the twos are golden. There's a guy in my trade named, named Lance. He's made hundreds of thousands of dollars over the last few months. All he trades are... Net gas yes, ice iceberg by NG, 152 contracts. All he trades are the reversion trades, the 1 ATR reversions, and the barfs, and he trades the slugs. That's all he's traded. And he comes in here and he posts his... Like this, I like, love showing this in here. I put it on my Twitter, too, right? If you come over here, he 
he posts his stuff. He, he's always in there answering questions too. He's very helpful. It's like he's like here. He's like he basically says just follow the rules because everyone's always asking, well, how did you do it? How did you do it? He's like, oh, I just followed Scott's rules. So here, this was I've shown this before, but this was this was a while ago. This was in uh, March. You know, he made this was only he only, it was only up sixty seven thousand, but he's made like four hundred grand in a few months. So. It's great to see. This is what I. This is why I do this, guys. This is why I gang girls. This is why I teach what I'm teaching, because I want you guys to learn how, what drives markets, and if you understand it, you can be a profitable trader. All right, I gotta take a quick break. This is where I used to love Bruce on these, where I can actually breathe while you ask questions. But let me. Uh, if you guys get questions, throw them in the trade room. Um, let's keep an eye on this. And guys, if the I always say, guys, 100 times a webinar, but if this is too loud, let me know and I'll turn it off. Uh, no questions? Let's see. Do you mind showing the iceberg setting you use for the subchart? For which market? I, I watch 17 markets, JK. Um, oh, here we go. Captain Price again with his 85 techs. Captain Price, lay, at least for my webinars, lay off the caffeine. <laughs> Denali has four full book. Yeah, well, may I mean if they if they have the MBO data, then they do. But you know, then that's the only other one that I know of. If I, they, they could have changed, but I know not. I know like the major ones do not have it. So yeah, Denali may have it. Um, I know it's sweet. I don't know what you're referring to. So the sweeps indicator shows the numbers as well. So you can see like right here, this was all, all sweeps. 1200 these were part of some stops too but not so all stops are sweeps not all sweeps are stops so for instance this this was only 100 of these were stops the rest of them 1100 were sweeps so somebody was sweeping this to the downside that's what you're asking about all right so still not filled on the short if this comes back i'll have three different strategy shorts on we already talked about the slug if it's aggressive that's 2850 is my entry we have the izzy trade the inflection zone trade that's aggressive and now this would be the barf trade that I can trade to, and let's see if there's any liquidity down here. I can trade the lick trade too. So I look for liquidity that's been in the order book for a long time. This is a little bit, it's not crazy. But I, I put on that as well. Why not? Why, why not go short these? Net markets? gas ice iceberg by NG 246 contracts. Short, shorting is so easy in these markets. All right, let's take a look at natural gas. And that's the other thing I preach to you guys in my room every day. If you are just staring at the crappy ES all day long, you are doing yourself a major disservice. It's the same principles in every futures market. We're looking at volume. We're looking at traders loaded up in certain areas, and we're taking advantage of it. That's all we're doing, right? The driver of trading of all futures markets. That's what it is. And if you, you know, again, I'm not. The whole idea is you use these this information in areas you deem important. So you may have different areas that you look at besides me. Yeah, obviously, it's a lot of you do, and that's fine. But if you can if you can apply this information to those areas, now you have yourself a real edge, and that's the whole point. And, and you have yourself much higher probability, and that's all trading is is your trading probabilities. There's nothing for sure. It doesn't work all the time. You know, it works. It works more often than it doesn't. That's why it's an edge. But if you can just realize that going in, we always every webinar I liken it to a casino. It's just like a casino. They go. They don't win every single day, but at the end of the year, they're always profitable. Why? Because of math, aka edge. They know their games are set up for the. They will be a winner in the long run. It's the same thing with a trading edge. If you know you have an edge, you just keep putting the trade on, and you will be a winner in the long run. If you follow your rules, and that's a whole other right. That's a whole other thing where you can have. I can show people this spreadsheet till my till the cows come home. Right and show them and okay you get in here you S and P here. stops stopped by ES six hundred seventy five contracts. Right, so I never filled on that. So guys, this is the why I do what I do. Right. So I put that entry. Did you see me just jump in a short right away? No. I said you need to get a full ATR plus fifteen percent out of that zone that I'm willing to short you. That never happened. Never got filled. I didn't take a loss here. Now we have a new setup. Now we move on to the, the most recent setup, and we do the same thing over again. So we had here 670 stops, 
That is my threshold. My threshold's 500 for stops for ES. You can see these sweeps that came in. This is one of the, you, you guys are always asking me, sending me emails, what, what book map should I get? I'm on Thinkorswim. The Thinkorswim is bare bones. You don't get any of this, I don't think. I don't think you even get the SI indicator. But it's between Global and Global Plus, I actually have a, um, I, just set, I just made this for my room yesterday. It only took me two years to do this, but um, so I got the start of your welcome to the room. But if you come over here for the, uh, and these are, this is all the stuff that I use, right? And then there's all my documents. If you remember the room, you get access to all that stuff. But the point is, I want to show you here. This is where you get the MBO one. Don't wait, where is the... Oh, here it is, right here. Comparison, right? So if you go to the comparison <clears throat> page, if it ever loads, come on. You can do it. All right, so this one, the middle columns, global versus global plus, right? You come down here, global's got a lot of stuff, and then, then it just stops, stops right here. And the major ones, the absorption indicator, I don't use that as much because I can see the sweeps and everything. But the, the main thing, so you get all these other other benefits, and these are a lot of like if you want to trade on on Bookmap, trade through Bookmap, like on the on the on the actual chart, things like that. This is the biggest one here, it's the sweeps. So the sweeps is really, really important. That's what we're looking at there. And, and Global does not have it, Global Plus has it. So like I show you guys all the time, go to my trade room or go to my, my. Um, so this this document is, actually I could probably share it. Well, no, this is for my trade room, but if you come in, you get this document. But if you go to my, if you go to my trade room, I keep saying trade room, my website, I show you guys every week, but there's always new traders in here, like I said. Just go here, and then you get discounts to the Global Plus. Click on that banner, and you get discount. But it's only for Global Plus. But it's highly recommended because just for the sweeps indicator alone that you get. So, again, that's what you see, all these little white black bubbles. Those are sweeps. Really important, and it really helps you draw your zones, too. Um, many times, especially for the stop runs. All right, did I just miss a trade here? Hold on, I gotta, first of all, I gotta delete my first order. So those those other shorts that I had working are now canceled, and I'm gonna trade off this new setup. Uh, I just gotta remember what they were. There we go, cancel. All right. So quickly, I should have been getting this zone in before I started showing you guys websites. 44 quarter down to 42.50, here's your new zone. this a short setup needs to touch 3650 and it just did so and let's see hopefully I'm not missing let's see if we have new loves here I think we should have new loves I don't think I'm missing a trade yet and you can see this is guys this, did you just see when I got out of my gold a little bit ago why did I get out because of the red log hey how did that work out so look at the, I mean, just look at how these things respond to these love. It's craziness. Like every day, this is two years into it, and I just sit in awe watching these things. They're nuts. Anyway, back to here. All right, so we did draw new lugs. So there's no slug trade here. I think this is still an Izzy trade, potential Izzy trade. Let's see. Yeah, I'll still take an Izzy. Remember, these are zones. This is the general area. Here's your stop run. But. What I'm going to do here, so this Izzy, actually, I should have, I should have noticed this, the first Izzy. I didn't get filled, thankfully. But this is a different situation with an Izzy where you, I'm, going to, I'm going to wait for the ATR retest failure. Why is that? Yes, it's an inflection zone. I understand that. The best Izzy's are straight moves in inflection zones like this. These are the best trades in inflection zones. Straight moves. This was the gap tonight or last night or this morning right into this. That was that gold volume event that I showed you. Those are the best Izzy's. This, I'll still take this Izzy, but this is not a, a great place to short structure-wise. Why? Well, because we built balance all day yesterday with a couple huge buying tails, and now we're up here. So 
anyone who was short in here is feeling pain, right? That held their trades and you know the longer term traders. This is not a great place to short. Does it mean it can't do that? Absolutely not. It does it all the time. But percentage wise, it's way more likely to launch from here. That's not a very very good square for the balance area. Way more likely to launch than fail. So I will still take the Izzy trade because I know how important of a zone this is. We already went over this earlier in the webinar, but I need to see it's going to be my conservative entry where I wait for ATR retest failure, kind of like the bar. Well, we already know we got the ATR. That was 36.50. So let's see if it retests this zone, which would be really shocking. So if you took the ATR trade, by the way, let's see what that price is. Let's see if that's, this could be a win or two. I'm sure it is because every one that I don't take is always a winner. That one you get in at 37. Stop out at 30. What did I just fill on? Uh-oh. I had a stop working in gold that I forgot to cancel. Surprise, surprise. Hold on. I can't tell you how many times I do this a day, guys. I just got so much going on and I forget to cancel my orders and I take it on the chin. Hold on. At least I caught it right away today. That is number 56. Hold on one second. And of course, literally every time, it's a loser. <laughs> I'll look over and I'll be like, oh, I got to get out. And it's against me. Like this one was eight ticks against me. This is just my personal struggles. I go through. Anyway, if you take the ATR trade, you get in at 37, you stop out at 30, you're out right at the back at the, at the beginning of that zone is 42. So this is just a one ATR. The two you can take at these prices. So if you want to take those, because they uh, do it all the time. So anyway, you would have been in the, some of the best ATR trades are when you're getting in and prior value events. So this, this has an extremely high percentage of coming back and retesting this zone, right? And that's what we take advantage of. That's the shorter term trade. For the longer term stuff, I am waiting patiently. There's no aggressive entries here because um, there's no slug. We have new lugs. There's no izzy. There is an izzy, but I, this is a conservative izzy. So I'm going to wait for, we already got the ATR. That was 36.50. I'm going to wait for a retest, wait for a failure, and then I'm going to go short. Does it mean that's going to happen? No, but I'm, I've am i watched enough of these. I demand the retest failure. This could just rip down. And guess what? There's another volume set up right around the corner. I'll be able to, just like the gold that I missed early, I still was able to capture 180 ticks of that move, uh, even though I missed the first 150 of it, uh, because there was another volume event right after that, and that was this, right? So I, that's why I demand certain things, because I know even if I miss it, I have a very good chance of, of finding another place to, to get in the trade. So this was the goal that I showed you. I missed I missed this one. God, this is just a ridiculous move. Look at this move. I mean, I was in it, but I wasn't in it from down here. So I missed this one. And I was bitching the entire time. Then this came in. Again, this was sell ice, not buy ice. And I got the ATR, which I demanded, retest failure. And I got long two, two strategies. It caught this whole move up all the way to what? The magical red lug. Right there. That was a good trade. All right, so now we just, I'm waiting for a retest of the zone. Here we go. Yeah, guys, I'm telling you, man, they, you would be amazed at how often this routine happens. You just would be amazed. Here we go, right back to it. So it'll be the second one ATR that's going to be a winner if I don't jinx it. My, I'm sure my room is like giving me the finger right now because every time I mention it, it's almost there. <laughs> It'll turn around and like rip down and stuff about. So I'll keep quiet, but high percentage, especially like I said, when you get the ATR reversion trades back into the prior volume events, those are golden most times. So we'll see what happens there. So now I'm just waiting. This. So would I take a long off of this setup? Can anyone tell me? And if not, why not? And you can't be part of my room if you're in the thing. Could I take a long off this last stop run that fired off? If you put it in the right answer, you get bonus. Actually, if you put in the right answer, if you join my trading room, I'll give you 10% off. How about that? The first, like, five people. Tell me if I can go long off this setup, and if I can't, why Why not? Or no, or nobody can answer. That, that works, too. That, this is how you guys. This is how you guys learn, guys. Not 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 participating. That's a way not to learn. If you participate, this is what I tell my room every day too. You're going to learn. Not yet longs, but why? I didn't say. I didn't say anything about when. Would I? That's what I said. Would I go long off this setup? 
at this point? If it say it got up here, would I go long? I didn't ask what you like, Enterprise. I'm asking for my strategies. Would I go long? <laughs> Is there anybody in here besides Captain Price? Let's see. We have uh, we have 48 people in, in the YouTube. Not one person could participate. And because you're not going to learn if you if you answer the question. If it's wrong, that's how you learn. And if you're right, you get a bonus. It's not hard. Setting. So I tell my room every day. By the way. So nobody's going to answer. No, Mario. No, I'm waiting for a retest to go short. Right? My, my question is, so then here comes the retest, by the way. I will go short, but I'm saying, say this market ripped up here. Crude stocks stopped would, by CL. Would I go 153 long? contracts. Even if it did retest failure, would I go long? At this point, is what I'm asking. All right, so no one wants to participate, so... I shouldn't even give you the answer because you guys won't participate, but no. Why? Because this market got an ATR below this event. That's how I determine whether they're short, they're long or short plays. This the long is disqualified now because this was able to push an ATR out of this volume event. Right? That's the answer. Great, great job participating, guys. Alright, so we got uh, something in crude here. Hey, what, what, what do you know? Anyone here believe that this got up to this liquidity? This is what we talk about all day, every day for five years, right? Even before the SI indicator. Novices, when they bring this up, that don't know what they're looking at. Say we're down here like, oh, I want to go short, man. Look at all those offers up there. I, I want to be short. It's the opposite. This is magnet. These are magnets. The market is going to get up there. Why? Because this is the big money. What does the big money do? They push the market into their orders so they can... They get long down here and they get out up here. I already showed you the example. That's what I did all day, every single day. All right, what do we got here? Actually, this is, I think that crude stop was in, uh, I'm not going to trade because my lugs are now in August. This is rolling right now. So part of the volume is still in, um, it's still in uh, July. Yeah, so the, I'm not going to trade. Yeah, that was this right here. I'm not going to, I'm not trading. July, but if you want to trade it, this is the zone. Just because everything's rolled, like my chart, all my charts, my lugs, everything is rolled to August, so I'm not trading this, but this was the stop run right here. You can see it. You can see the market pulse, the heavy buying. And there was actually more heavy buying even after the stop run. So they actually what we'll do here, I'll show you a little market pulse example that we're going over in my room. There's gonna be brand new strategies and a new course on this as well, because this thing is incredible as well. I don't really count the market pulse buying with the stops, but you can see there was more buying here, and there's your sweeps indicator, so you can see it. So we want to see how the market reacts to this. So this is a shorter term kind of scalp trade as well, where you want to see which way this breaks, and you're going to get like we've been talking this whole webinar a retest, and then whatever way it runs, you can go you can go long. So say it, say this breaks above here, comes back, I wait for the retest and starts to run away. I'll go long and I'll put my stop right below where that started, and that's where you can use the sweeps to your advantage big time right so instead of trying to figure out where this happened you can just look at your sweeps but i would probably put it below this one so let's just see how this we'll come back to this probably but we'll see how this plays out if it goes like this i'll go long and go short and then i just put my stop at the other side of the zone all right just a little kind of scalp like i said so many of you guys want to scalp well that's that's how you scalp you scalp off a of volume and atr stuff not off the dome you can but you're not going to you're not going to make money so if you don't want to listen to me, you do it for a few months and then come back and then tell me I was right. Oh, by the way, surprise, surprise, here's your retest. That's the reversion trade. I didn't jinx it for my room. You get out right there, right back at the zone. What was that price? You were long at 37, you're out at 42. Done. Perfect retest, failure. Now, this is an official short setup for me if it comes back. So I demand ATR, got it, retest, got it, moves back out, we'll short it. The short may be, price may be in this zone. I'm going to move just out of that zone. You don't want to, you don't want to enter trades in prior volume events. I just did that the other day. I wasn't paying attention in wheat, and I got it shoved right down my throat. 
I just put the order in and I looked, I got filled in Nola zone and it literally was the low tick and, and took a loser on the trade. So anyway, back to the position trading, I'm going to put on Barf and I'm going to put on Lick because there's liquidity down there. What's my entry price? $35.50. Let's make sure this is up to date. Actually, it's declining, so it's 5.74 now. Let's see how my entry price changed. Now I can get in at 36. But 36 is smack dab in the middle of this zone. I'm not entering in the zone. So I I got what I wanted there. I got what I wanted there. If it comes back, I'm going to put it just outside the zone. So I'll put it at 34 quarter instead of 36. I'm willing to risk the extra point and a half, get a worse fill, so I don't enter right in this old, this other stop run volume event. And if this thing just rips off the page, then I, I, don't, I do nothing. And there's another one right around the corner, and I wait for my next setup. I will not go long this setup, though. This is the question that no one wanted to answer because it was able to push an ATR below here. And just from watching so many of these, I've learned that is that is telling you something if it's able to push the ATR below the zone. Going So th this is the kind of talk that I love, that I, I just love to, to give the verbal lashings to. Going to hit into 45 more likely. Okay, so did you did you load the boat? Did you bet your mortgage on the on get long for 45 and put your offer 45, Captain Price? Are you long? Like every dollar that you're worth? I mean, if you know what's going to happen, you should be long, right? The point is, there's no, you don't know what's going to happen. I think we went over this last week, right? Granted, you used different terminology this this webinar. You said more likely, right? But so what do you when you say more likely? What are you going off of? Well, why is it more likely to hit forty five, and versus what? What's the other price that you're talking about? I hate to make an example out of you because you're the only person that participates in here. But like when I see traders say stuff like that, that's where I just lose it. It's like, well, why is it more likely? Give me a re give me your reason why it's more likely that we're going to hit forty five, and, and versus what price? Forty five versus thirty five. Like what? What more likely? What? And did you go? And where did you go long? And where was your stop? That's what I want to know. I'm not saying we're not going to hit 45. I want to know what your reasons are. And if you if you add that reason, you should be long, right? So please please expand on your comment. Since you love typing anyway, throw that in there. All right. Let's see what else is going on here. I feel like I've been on for two hours. Just trend based. Well, anyone could see it's trend based. Well, what about when the trend ends? What does that mean? Yeah, yeah, we're trending up. That means I just buy. And I just buy blindly and I hold. Like, where do you get in? Where is your stop at? What does that mean? I love that you're doing this because this is this is how a lot of most traders think, and this is why most traders don't make money. Like, what does that even mean? That's so that's so broad. The trends up. Well, no shit. It's been up. Part of my language. It's been up for three months. You just buy and hold, and uh, what does that mean? I don't know what to do about before and left and you know, stop running. I, avoid it. I, I don't, I don't, the, you're not answering the question. Did you get long? Where did you get long? Where was your stop and why? And by the way, it didn't touch 45. So you're wrong there so far. You missed it by a tick. So if you had your offer there, you did not get filled. And there we go. So I'm going to short this, even though Captain Price is telling me we're going up because of the trend. I just love when people say that because then I can point out why, how traders make so many mistakes thinking like they do. 5.85. 35.75, I'll short. The, actually, no, i got to get out of that zone. I remember we said, so it's 34. I'll get in at 34. I'll go 34 quarter because I, I just don't want to enter in this prior volume event. All right, so 34 quarter. <clears throat> So we go, let's see what size I could put on. This is all in the spreadsheet, right? I could put on, obviously you can't trade in half lots, so it's seven MES. And I'll put that on a 34 quarter. And that would be the barf trade and the lick trade. The lick, it's the lick. All right, so those shorts are working. Again, the barf is any ATR retest failure and then the lick is the same thing and I, I'm playing my target for that one is resting liquidity below this right here so you see that liquidity that's where that target is I don't get out for any other reason 
the barf trade I'll get out of certain areas and we'll go over that if I get filled. But the lick trade, it's literally a trade. It's either liquidity or stop out or an opposing volume event. So say this thing starts rolling towards this liquidity and we get a new event that turns bullish. Well, I'll get out then. Other than that, that's my target and I hold it till it gets to that. got questions throw them in Let's see what happened here I don't think I missed any aggressive trade here so natural gas obviously launched it gapped up and launched and the number was today too but it gapped up before that it's almost like someone knew what the number was surprise surprise so it gapped through this zone NQ ice iceberg sell NQ 151 contracts right through that zone and now it's in this zone so the volume event was down here if it came back I'll, you know, I'll take a long but I didn't miss anything the, NQ the, ice iceberg sell NQ 187 contracts those busy zones are fade zones and I, there was no fade set up to fade it so all right we got something firing off in NQ let's see what's going on here You can see all this aggressive buying here too. So this is a good example on all, all sweeps, all stops are sweeps, but not all sweeps are stops. So someone swept this order book for 1,200 contracts. Well, this is aggregated, right? When you do it like this, you can just see them all, but then you spread it out. Either way, somebody swept the, the crap out of the order book. Let's see how it works out for them. And they just did it again. And you can see the market pulse um, firing off here. You had it there, you had it there. Get it there, and the sweeps correspond almost always to. That's another, you know, you can get a confirmation on the market pulse with the sweeps. But regardless, someone's buying this aggressively, and what are they running into? A mouthful of sell ice, 247. All right, so we're going to draw that zone, and we will trade off of it potentially. Let's see, so that started here, went up to there, and so all you got to do, what you want to do. Right click your chart. Show, I show this every week. Configure visible components. Get your last price line on there. It's annoying. I don't like it. It make, makes the, the, the chart noisy, but it helps you draw these zones much more accurately. So that started over here and it came down to here. Right? So I, all you do is take your cross here and pull it across and you want all the prices that happen in that spike. And that that's uh, the subchart spike. So actually, I got to bring this down a little more. <clears throat> there you go. There's your zone. That's step one. Step two is putting the prices in the spreadsheet, and then we're going to see where we're at. So 12 or 15, 26, 275 is your top of your zone. And my ATR in here is 29.52, meaning it's just rotating about 30 points every five minutes. That's what that's telling you. The average true range. Google it. All right. There's that. Let's bring our bubbles back up. Now I am going to. Next, we got to see where we are in the bigger picture. We're through this inflection zone. This was just a, there wasn't much here. Kind of gap down. There's some selling toes. So this zone's at, I thought we gapped down. Yeah, we did. So we gapped down this morning. I, I drew this zone this morning because we had some tails here. And we actually opened up here and then recovered. So, but we're through here anyway. So I wouldn't trade in his heat trade, inflection zone trade here. Uh, let's see where we are on the lugs. This is a potential profiles encouraged trade pick. That's this one. 
So if you guys are old enough, Profiles in Courage was a book written by JFK. So just try to make him rememberable and funny. But what, what is this? This is, so this, we drew this, I went back and drew this. So these pink zones are red, whatever color this is. This is back from last August. This was a uh, market profile composite. So kind of like I use the ones that I draw now, they're blue. Those are the recent ones, like these. Well, this is from last August, so I just know it was a while ago. Either way, just like the zones, we saw the zone held up many multiple times in the S that I showed you earlier. Even if they're prior events, they still hold. So we are at an, uh, this is an important area. Many times these markets get up to these and they fail. So I can take the profiles and courage short, and that's an aggressive short. That's just one strategy. If this doesn't get an ATR above here, I can still take longs based on how this trades. Let me see what's going on here. These aren't thresholds, so I'm not going to draw those. So we'll keep that as it is. So now we just wait for the, to see how this trades. So if this gets up to the validation price of 92 quarter, that's a, that's a bullish event. If this breaks down, I'm getting in aggressively. I'm not waiting for the ATR retest that we've been talking about this entire webinar. Um, I will get in at aggressively. I will short it for the profiles and courage trade at 1775. And I can put on, I'll put on four. We'll round up. That in. That's a ways away, so 1775. All right, so that is working. <clears throat> now we just wait and see what happens here. Well, I think we all know what's going to happen now that I see this. And this is the game. All day, every day, we have, we have a trade for it. It will get up there. I'm not saying. Okay, sometimes it goes like this and it will sell for 100 points, screw around down here, they get better fills down here, and then it makes their way up here. But it will trade to that price very, very likely right now. But by the end of the day, you can there's a very high, high percentage this liquidity gets their fill. And that's just how these markets work. The longer it's been in here, look how long this has been in here. Yeah, it's, a, it's at a, a round number, but they'll get their fill. All right, so you know, again, I'll still take the bar flong here. I wouldn't take the liquidity long here, even though liquidity is here, because I need to see this, this, this. I'm not going to enter right here just for a trade to that, right? So I, I still could put on the bar flong. What do we need to see? I need to see the validation price first and foremost, which 92 quarter. So if this market touches 92 quarter, this volume event is a bullish volume event, and I will trade it accordingly. Let's wait for that. <clears throat> And doing and wait for a retest of that zone of natural gas. That's not going to be for a while, it doesn't look like. All right. Captain Price got us 45, but I still wanted to know why he went long, where his stop was. If he did go long, probably didn't. He's probably just talking like most traders do. <clears throat> so this now this volume setup is, you see, once again, I avoided. I was going to go short both of these setups, right? I was going to go short on this one, and I was going to go short on this one. I didn't, and I put because I demanded ATR retest failure. Well, this this first one I was going to go short aggressively. It never got to that price, so I never shorted, avoided a loss. I was going to short this one. We did get the ATR retest. It never got to that price to fill me. Didn't get short that one. Guys, if you're avoiding losses, it's the same as a win because if you take a loss, you have to have basically two winners. I mean, hypothetically, to make that back, right? So, avoiding losses is just as good as a win. So, with my the way I trade these from watching so many with my rules. I avoided a loss and a loss. Now I can't go. I can't go long this setup though because per my rules, it was it got an ATR below that zone right here. Right, that disqualifies a long. So I can't go long this setup, but I avoided two shorts. On to the next trade. On to the next setup. That's that. Let's see what happened in the market pulse and crude. Just to give you guys a little glimpse of that market pulses all right so how I would trade this right so we literally I just put out a video from my room on, on crude the other day right so you had the aggressive buying there part of that was the stop run but then you had more aggressive buying it moved below here here so these guys were off sides I will wait for that and then I'd wait for that to get short I wouldn't just go short right here because they're still you know it's up here but if this fails right here so this is like its own little SI zone that we draw. If this fails, you could go short the minute it breaks below that last low. You could even go short when it breaks back below where that buying was. 
and then you put your just stop right, right above there. So you're risking like 12 ticks. And you could catch, you know, three, four, five times your, your risk. So that's, you know, just a brief synopsis. Uh, there's going to be many strategies for this thing because I am seeing incredible things with the market pulls. So maybe we'll take a, maybe we'll take a, a sampler, sampler platter here just to show you guys. Um, you know, especially when I just saw what happened. So it did go a little higher. And then someone came in and swiped it. So now if it gets back below where this buying started, and the first one was a stop room, if it gets back below here, I'm, I'm going to just take a quick short, and I'm just going to risk back above this high. All right? So I'm basically risking, I mean, this is, this is a little wider of a, of a trade. This is like 20 ticks, basically. I'll short it at 81 just for, I shall do it on this. So my this computer, I have a rhythmic setup to, to test these market pulse ideas. So I'll put it on that one. Let's find that trade. This one, when I say 81, actually that's not, yeah, this, that is actually a July. I'm not trading July, but I'll trade it on the uh, market pools. Actually, I don't want to trade on the webinar because it's compliance. It's just better not to trade. But I'm going to short at 81, and then my stop, if I get filled, I'm going to put my stop above this last high. So I'm just, this is just like a, a scalp type trade. What am I doing? I'm trying to take advantage of these buyers that are off sides, right? If it comes back, if it doesn't, then once again, I don't do it. I, I, you could go long this as well. Well, here, we'll do that. And so if this gets back this new high, I'm gonna, I'll take a long in the same way, and then I'll put my stop below where this buying came in. So this trade 70.02, I'll go long. Just just to, to, I'll just do a little example trade here. Again, this is a SIM account on the, this is a uh, Apex, and I'm just testing out these ideas, but they're working well. Let's see if we can fill on this. You guys will hear the fill. The other thing I like too, if this moves higher, once again using the sweeps indicator, somebody just tried to sweep these lower and that's, if this moves a little higher, that's not working out for them either. So we have the guys that absorbed this buying, they're holding their breath right now. Someone just tried to sell it, they're holding their breath. If it moves higher, you're probably gonna see these guys start to puke out. And that's what you're taking advantage to, advantage of. The issue with this trade as of right now is we don't have any concrete, like this is a scalp trade, so where are you getting out? So, you know, you can use, so these are the areas that I talk about in my trading in the zone. This is where we get out of the position trades, All right? You can use any of these areas to be getting out. Number five, paying myself as the market makes some money available to me. And these are all the places that I get out as the market moves in my favor. Public levels, market profile, composite highs, lowest points of controls, VWAP, standard deviations. Uh, spot gamma levels, struggle to get through having less in liquidity, important predefined zones based on counter structure, those are busy zones. I think I did. Scott, Bonsai Siceberg sells EV, 575 contracts. So this is still a trade in progress, but there's going to be brand new strategies on this stuff too in a eventual course. But you, what you could do is get out of the liquidity here. So this could be like a, a 5 to 1 trade. All right, I just got filled, so let's try this out. All right, so what I did, this is not an SI, this is not an SI trade. This is a brand new trade we're working on in the room. And there's so many more behind this. That's why I tell my room all the time. I have so many other things that I have in, in this noggin from trading for so long that I will release to the world that I'm gonna put on paper for once. So anyway, I'm gonna put my stop right where I was gonna enter, 81, and see if we can get up to here. If I'm wrong, I lose, you know, 20 ticks. If I'm right, I make 50. Those are the trades. That you want risk reward trades. Hold on, let me put this stop in here. All right, that's already in. All right, see what happens there. <clears throat> that's just a market pulse trade. That's like I said, it has nothing to do with the SI. This is ES. We're not doing anything with that zone. Um, let's see if this turned into a bullish event. Remember, we need to see 92.50. Did it get up there? No, but let's see if this is an ATR trade that we've been talking about. The ATR short was 89 quarter, and you're playing it back to the to the zone at 65.75. That did not get to 89 quarter. Yeah, it did. So guys, look at this. This is exactly why we have these prices where we have them. I mean, look look at look at the high price of that move. Where would you have been in? 89 quarter. Where did it get to? 89 quarter. <laughs> Let's see if it reverts back to the zone. This will be like number three or number four 
uh, on the, just on this webinar that, is, that have worked. Yeah, this one got close. Where's the exit price? The exit price would have been 65.75. You would have already been out. There you go. There's another ATR winner. My room better be killing it today. That's all I got to say. Because a lot of these guys, a lot of the guys are trading the one ATRs in the room. This is the pattern. It just happens over and over and over and over and over. It's crazy. And you're just, we're just taking advantage, taking advantage of these algos. Look at this market. When it looks like a Christmas tree, you see all this? What do you think that is? They're algos. Whipsawing all traders. Instead, we're taking advantage of the whipsaw. See how that works? Feels quite nice to take advantage of the algos instead of having them take, take advantage of you. All right, so that crude trade's working. This is, no, that's August. Maybe it's not. Why did I get into this? No, O2, no, it's not working. It's just sitting here. But these are, Quick scalp trades, right? And just trying to get this thing to roll based on that buying that was there. All right. Um, I think that's about it. There's not a lot going on. Hopefully, you guys are learning, though. Let's see if there's any questions. I got about five minutes. If you guys got questions, throw them on the YouTube channel, please. says Scott Crude is already in August. Yes, I, that's what I said. I wasn't going to trade crude uh, position trading wise. I, I'm, I'm only looking for setups in August with the SI indicator. But I did the market pulse in July just to show, give you guys a market pulse example. All right, that's that's why I did that. But yeah, I'm not I'm not trading July either. And this may come back and, and be a loser. But I mean, this officially didn't really get. Actually, I think I screwed this up. To tell you the truth, hold on a second. I did screw this up. So remember I said I need to see the market move out of here, retest, and then go. So this was the move out. So I kind of jumped the gun on that one. So now if it moves out, that's where you'd want to enter the trade, right? I, I, I don't know why I did that, to tell you the truth. Because I just got done saying that's the pattern, right? You want to see move out a little bit. And there's not like it's not like an ATR move out. It's just a little bit of a move out, a few ticks, come back. And then when it could, comes back and makes a higher high, that's where you want to get in. So I just jumped the gun on that one because I was watching this stuff. So hopefully it'll come back and I would have been long anyway, but I wouldn't, you know, if I don't have my head up my, you know what, I wouldn't have been long that yet. So hopefully that works. We'll see. All right. Let's, we got a couple more minutes throwing questions. Anyone besides Captain Price? Captain Price, how many, how many tucks have you put in today? 300? I mean, how do you find time to trade? I said, I can't even find other questions. Huge buy ICS. I didn't see any huge buy ICS. Saw some stop runs. Uh, all right, no questions. Yes, this is the this is the time to take advantage. I, you know, I charge three hundred and fifty bucks an hour for mentoring. Three hundred forty nine dollars of mentoring. When you're on these webinars, it's a chance to get mentoring without paying for it. So take advantage of it. That's what I'm telling you. Or not. All right. I'll, I'll stand a couple more seconds to see if we... Actually, this is already... Re I should be going along this setup. Oh, no, I shouldn't. Yeah, I should. Sorry. Because we got to the validation price, right? No, we didn't. I take that back. The ATR trade worked at 89 quarter, but this is still not an official bullish setup for the position trading. We need to see 92 quarter. So I need to see 92 quarter, and then a retest, and then a fail, and then I'll go long. Does that mean that'll happen? No. Does it mean it won't just run off the page? No, but I demand that. That's what I demand to, to go along this setup based on my strategies. I'll wait for that. Uh, see if I missed anything else here. So this is the great thing about this text box too, because actually I did miss bonds. Um, you know, get this up, hit file, alerts, and you get this page here. <clears throat> and if you miss something, because I hear stuff all the time, because I'm watching 17 markets, 
And I'm like, wait, what was that? You just come back over here. Like, oh, 822, this is Pacific time, 1022 Central, 575 bonds fired up. They go over here. See, so sell ice threshold for bonds is 500. Actually, this was more than that, 750. It gives you the alert right when it fires off, so it was 575 at the time, but this got up to 750, so I'm going to draw this zone. And also, when bonds, you start seeing setups of bonds, that usually signals a bigger move counter coming in equities, too. So I'm sure we're just going to go straight up a little more like this. Oh, goodness gracious, look at this now. Look at that. Everything's okay with the world. Just keep buying it. This is a perfect example, guys. Like, anyone with common sense looks at this stuff and is like, for the last four months, like, well, this doesn't make sense. I'm going to short it. This doesn't make sense. I'm going to short it. Guess what? It keeps going up. The market, what is it? The market can remain... Irrational longer than you can stay solvent, right? So I mean, this is this has just gone straight up for months, right? So you just you have to trade what you see, not what you think, is what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, if you have a thesis, come up with a thesis every day, right? And if you get the setups in those directions, trade bigger. But don't don't trade against things just because you think something should happen. You will get you won't be trading long, is what I'm telling you. All right, so this zone for I up off 127.17 and 127.15. Over bonds tab. ATR in here is point one four five. So then you hear your prices to validate, right? So if it gets up to 22, this is a long setup. If it gets down to 10, it's a short setup. And we trade in the same way. Last thing I'll look at, I should be doing this right away. Where are we at on the, on the bigger picture? Nowhere, but you can see how this zone keeps holding above. And this is just forming one big balance area now. You can see these zones. Selling tail, directional conviction, directional conviction, directional conviction, selling tail, directional conviction, selling tail. That's why we have these zones. When you get the volume events in those zones, those, those are some of the best edges out there. But the point is, we're not really in one here. So I'll just wait. I would, the BARF is always in play. So here, this is an official. What do we say? 127.20. So this is an official. It was able to get an ATR out of here. Now if it goes retest failure, I'll take it along. So the BARF's always in play. Do we have any liquidity up here? Yeah. Not really. Yeah, I mean, this is this is liquidity, obviously, but this is more like, yeah, I take that. This has been in here for a while. I don't I don't play liquidity that like just pops in the order book like this stuff. This is just algo screwing with you. The longer it's been in there, so I would take that. I take the lick trade. So if we go ATR, ATR retest failure, I'll take barf and I'll take lick. Two of the trading strategies. All right. Other than that, <clears throat> we have an official bullish setup in Nasdaq. So now I wait. If we get ATR retest failure, I'll take the BARF, blind ATR retest failure acronym. I wouldn't take LIC because LIC's right here, but surprise, surprise, I can't believe that's going to get filled. And there's nothing above there. Remember, because the reason I wouldn't take a look at the liquidity trade, because I'd be getting in right, basically right here. I'm going to risk all the way down here to make five points. That's not a good trade, so I'm not taking that. But I would take the BARF trade there. I will take the BARF trade. I'll keep an eye on a retest failure of that zone. Other than that, I never got stopped out of crude, but I should never have been in this until this and then that. If this moves back out, then I should be long, but that's all right. I'm just trying to give you guys an example of how cool that market pulse is. And other than that, if I get a retest of this natural gas zone, I'll take a barf long here as well. How's that sell ice? That happened. That's that, that, that. Other than that, thesis-wise, I mean, you know, so this is the reason I wouldn't go long this one or this one. I wouldn't go short aggressively in these zones at the time because you're breaking out of balance. 
they are, it's not high percentage shorts when you have balance areas and you're breaking out. All these are traders that are loaded up short, long and short. Guess who's wrong? The shorts. They puke. Right? So I would keep an eye on this move now. Now, if this gets to this zone, and this zone was from last August as well, you can see here, gap down this day, another selling tail and directional conviction. So that's the next zone up. I will gladly short aggressively into that zone because now we're far enough away from this balance area where I'm not worried about getting run over with guys puking, puking their shorts out, right? So keep an eye on this zone going into the afternoon. I'll definitely short that puppy. But that by no means is this market bearish, but I'm a day trader. I will take shorts. If I were to get a long setup now, so if you get a long setup, you can trade it bigger because this is breaking out of balance. That's obviously bullish. Broke out of that balance. Broke out of that balance. If your thesis is long, you can trade bigger on the long side. Just don't risk more than the most you should be losing in a day on your account is about 6%. If you lose 6%, you shut it down and you say, uncle, you say there's always tomorrow. All right. Last chance for questions or else I'm out of here. Let's see what we got. I wonder if, if I look in uh, Captain, Captain Price's. Typing. Yeah, and Q hit my validation price exactly. Good catch, can can. So now all that means now is I'm waiting for a retest failure. This was not an aggressive short. I mean, aggressive long scenario for my strategies. So I will wait for that, and then I'll go long. If that happens, if not, wait for the next setup. All right, that's it for me. Um, not not too much today you guys still, we went over a lot of stuff though so hopefully you guys got something out of it you guys need to start participating more and take advantage of my time but i will see you guys next thursday